Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. I, I don't know why, but I always think of the number four when I say four. It's been happening for years. Three, another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. And without any further ado, uh, let's jump right into it. So, yeah, um, not sure if you've been not paying attention to the news, but everybody's focused on one single thing right now. I was chatting with my friend and I was like, hey, we made it because we've been talking about the halving and this uh, bull run, bull market for Bitcoin for quite a long amount of time. Uh, the interesting part is that, woo, the having is is gone, but the conversations are very quickly uh, turning to you know what's next, where 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 we're gonna go, what are what are what are prices supposed to do? Tim Draper, Tim Draper is once again back in the news, almost like clockwork, because all the billionaires, I don't know if you've been seeing it, all the billionaires have been rushing back into the uh, cryptocurrency news space once again. Tim Draper, the venture capitalist known for his early investments in Skippy. Oh, sorry, this is Skype. Skype and Tesla is once again ruffling feathers with his sky-high Bitcoin prediction. In a recent interview, Draper claimed Bitcoin could soar to $10 million per coin fueled by widespread adoption and a weakening US dollar. If you get a, a, a moment today, uh, look at a chart, like uh, Bitcoin versus the US dollar. It is a little, uh, I want to use the word scary, but scary sounds also a bit intense. I'm going to say Mary. I, I don't know. what. So, my one of my other friends, we were discussing. I, you must have been seeing it. I can't be the only one. I don't use TikTok. I use Instagram just because I'm not in the mood to have like 95 apps on my phone that do the exact same thing. But I'm getting a lot of these videos where people are just like showing the value of the US dollar compared to Bitcoin in the last 15 years. One five years and the US dollar has already lost 99% of its value compared to Bitcoin. You know how terrifying that is? 99% is, a, is I mean, even crazier is all these people, the same people are posting these videos compared to the, to the Mexican peso and to the Argentinian yada yada and to the Japanese yen. Have you seen the value of the Japanese yen? I have a friend who's going to Japan for either weeks or months. That's not a joke. Because that currency has collapsed. It is the weirdest thing. All these fiat currencies are like, they've never been doing well. But there's something like really scary that's happening right now. Another one of my friends was telling me that he knows someone who's from I want to say Vietnam. I want to say I want to say that's the country. And his friend is always boasting, talking about how he's saving money and he's investing and he's putting it away. So my friend goes to his friend and says, you know, they they they, they were talking about money and stuff like that. And he goes, "Where where are you putting your money?" He goes, "Ah, in my bank account." He goes, "Okay." He goes, how much interest are they giving you? He goes, about 6%. He goes, oh, that's great. Like 6% 6 on your money? You know, it's it's not beating inflation, which is like 99%. But he's like, yeah, you know, that's actually really good. And then he looked at the, the charts of the Vietnamese currency compared to the U.S. dollar. And it had, I mean, dramatically fallen. And my friend was like, that's why the bank is offering 6%. So he goes to the guy and he goes, hey. You, this this isn't good, you know, like you're losing money because of inflation. And I kid you not, I kid you not, the guy goes, what's inflation? And my friend said he didn't have it in his, like, in him to have to explain to this person that he was like literally losing money. He's like, I, I, I can try and say something. Anyway, that's, whoa, whew, completely 
besides the point. If you get a chance to look at Bitcoin's value or the other currencies, the fiat currency values compared to Bitcoin, this is part of the reason why, part of the reason why I think we're seeing all these companies and institutions and banks getting into the space. Most of what we're experiencing is also lies. There's a reason why I think, once again, for those of you who missed it like three days ago, why the moment the halving happened, Jamie Dimon, uh, what, what, what's that other thing? Oh gosh, two other gigantic banks also came forward and they were like, Bitcoin's garbage, Bitcoin's trash. And I was like, you're choosing very particular times. I think what we're seeing is a literal gold rush. Like a literal, like these, they understand what's happening to fiat currencies, but you can't say it out loud because it seems logical. It seems you sit there and you go, it would make the most sense to alert the public. Can you imagine? So first of all, stop it. We know, me and you, I'm looking you dead in your eyeballs. Me and you both know inflation is not 4% because it, 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 it would didn't make any sense. It wouldn't make sense for rent. It wouldn't make sense for gas and petrol. It wouldn't make sense for food, water, housing. You name it, it would not make sense. Imagine the idea is that inflation, especially for the U.S. dollar, especially just based off of not the CPI data. We're not talking about a basket of goods. We're talking about life. It's probably over 50%. If you tell people that the world reserve currency is inflating by over 50%, that means that all those other currencies that we're also seeing are probably like hundreds of percent. There was a country in the news two or three days ago. I'm going to start, I'm, I'm trying to remember to keep posting stuff on Twitter so I can show you the guys like the, the videos and stuff that I'm watching. And this woman, she was Cuba. It was in Cuba. You may, be, you may be able to find, like, type in Inflation Cuba on YouTube. You'll, you'll be able to find it. And this woman was talking about, she's like, she takes her money. She runs to the store. She was like, it, like, it devalues over the course of the day. She's like, we can't do a lot anymore. Like, it's, it's getting really rough. And there were these women. They, they found ways of basically getting, like, food and stuff like that from other countries. But it was selling for, like, 30, I think 30 or something times what a person normally made in a week. And she's like... We only have rich people coming in here to buy this stuff, but it's like the world is changing so rapidly, like right in front of us. Like, it, like we're experiencing this crazy surge of history nearly every single day, literally all the time. But then I think, and I'm like, imagine if the people in the banks, because it's one thing for Michael Saylor to sit on stage. It's one thing for Tim Draper to say something. It's one thing for Anthony Scaramucci to go on, on CNBC and go blah, 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 Bitcoin. Imagine if Jamie Dimon actually said the truth. Imagine if the president got up and said the truth. Imagine if the people from the Fed got up and were like, the inflation rate is we're like, we, we can't control it anymore. We're not going to ever pay back our trillions of dollars worth of debt. We messed up the system. The only answer is Bitcoin. Everything would collapse, except for Bitcoin. But I mean, like, the, the system that we, you know, live in would completely crumble. So it's these really weird things that are happening. Like, think about that. I only have seen those charts because I'm in the cryptocurrency space. Imagine showing those charts of the devaluation of the U.S. dollar compared to Bitcoin. You'd have about 80, 90 percent of people who wouldn't understand what you're showing them. If you explained it to them, their brains would melt and they would understand all the lies that they've been told and are constantly being told. It's really insane. Like we're like we're witnessing all of this stuff right now. And the only thing that I can gather mentally myself from all this stuff, this is why. BlackRock and Fidelity got into the space. Do you understand what it means for these companies to have to say out loud? They were forced. You are forced to go through the SEC and file publicly. If they didn't have to do all of that, they'd be, they'd be accumulating by themselves. To have to announce and say, we need this new system that we talked crap about for so long. You understand the significance Remember the, the banks, for those of you who missed it a couple of weeks ago, these large banks 
are now going to the people who directly mine Bitcoin and they're trying to buy Bitcoin from them. And, and the people who are mining are like, we, like, we have none. We have none to give to you. You understand what that means? These people went in secrecy, in secrecy and private to these mining companies saying, we need some Bitcoin. There's not a lof- enough left. If we start buying on crypto exchanges, prices are going to rise. And then for them to be told no, think of the significance. It's absolutely insane. Bitcoin's been around for 15 years. Where are we in the next five? The next two halvings after this? The amount of Bitcoin that comes out is not even a full Bitcoin anymore. How high is the price? How many other institutions have begrudgingly have had, had to announce publicly, yeah, we're also buying Bitcoin. We're in the space. Bitcoin's going to hit a million dollars. I don't know who, who, who needed to know that. Bitcoin is going to go to a million dollars. And I, and I say this in parentheses, in caps, with a whole bunch of like quotations around it. Unless something really crazy happens. But if it's that crazy, we'd also lose the stock market and also house prices. And, you know, that, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you drift my catch. Do you understand, like, to be in the middle of all of this and see this happening? Bitcoin is literally going to either a million dollars or going to zero. There's no, there's no in between. Just based off of generalized supply and demand. It's crazy what's happening right now. It is completely nuts. It's completely insane. And it, I, what I have to do, even after this video, I want to see how many new addresses are, are popping up per day. Um... Yeah, it's 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 uh it's 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 uh it's it's a lot, you know. So Tim Draper said, and I quote, now two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or a million, or two million, or even ten million are the numbers that are probably going to happen. He said this during an interview with Lloyd Wahed, mostly about Bitcoin, Bitcoin's having and crypto trust and freedom. I mean you don't understand how difficult it is to, I try, I try my darndest to like stay centered. When I'm going over the news, when I'm talking about stuff, do you understand what's happening to the world? Do you understand to publicly be able to see that the US dollar is collapsing? The reason why we haven't had interest rate cuts is because inflation's not going down. They can tell you all you want, all they want. That inflation is 4, 5, 0.5, 0. 0.2184, And I watch these videos online. I watch these news stories. I watch these documentaries. I watch people on Instagram going to their local supermarket and they have receipts. These people show videos from when they went to the supermarket in 2000 and 2001 and milk is four times the price. The lettuce is eight times as much as it was before. They show their, uh, their, their their rental agreements. My rent has gone up by 89% in the last two years. They show how much it used to cost for gas, how much it is now, how much it is for their child care. Child care amounts are crazy. Did you just see that they just, um, oh gosh, I forgot what it was. I think there are three universities now in the States, um, I think that have... I think it's now more than $100,000 to get your education. Like on a basis level. This is not your master's. It's, it's over 100 k And they were showing the numbers of where it was like two, three, four, five, six years ago. It's up by like 28, 30 something percent. And they were, of course, trying to talk to the people in these universities. And they were, no, no comment, no comment. And it's like, you people are greedy for education. Are you out of your mind? That has nothing to do with the rate of inflation, especially when they own all these properties. We see all this stuff happening in front of us. And then you have these people go, well, inflation's only 4%. Where? What item? What in what store? Please tell me. Even air is more expensive. Water is more expensive. It's, it's really, it's completely nuts. When you think about the implications of what it means to be in this market, to be here right now, to be this lucky, to be this early. 
Because what happens when Bitcoin goes to $180,000 per coin? You're going to start getting phone calls and text messages. Ah, I remember you talking about Bitcoin years ago. How do I get into the market? These people will have to buy in at that amount. What happens when Bitcoin goes to half a million dollars? And the writing has been on the wall. The writing has been on the blockchain. The writing has been on the internet. We see these people around the world from these countries who are buying Bitcoin because it's more stable than their local currency. You know how volatile Bitcoin is? Can you imagine having to buy Bitcoin because the 4 to 5, 6, 7% fluctuations in price are less than the 80% fluctuations you've dealt with in the last month? It's nuts. And what's even crazier is that, once again, because it, it's so relevant. Remember, uh, we were talking about a couple of months ago. Somebody was posting that video over and over and over. It was all over the place. Uh, from that TV show, Million Dollar Listing. I think it's off the air. Don't know. The, the point is, uh, one of the people was trying to sell an apartment. They got an offer for it, but the offer wasn't Bitcoin. It was 50,000 Bitcoin. This is like seven, eight something years ago, whatever the, the, the actual amount is. And I told you my friend, he's in real estate. It, 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 it bur it's burned in my mind. He said that property that sold that they wanted $5 million for is probably worth around $24 million in New York. The problem is, is that that Bitcoin that was only, you know, four something million dollars is now worth $3.3 billion. So he said the person who owns the flat, they, they, they made money. They, they made around roughly $20 million, but they didn't make $3.3 billion. And I was like, wow. He said even crazier, that apartment lost more than 99% of its value compared to Bitcoin in the same time period. Think of everything around you. And this is, this is cover your ears if you don't want to hear this, because this is, this is how far I've come. Look at everything around you. The car, the house, any other assets you might have, they're all losing value compared to Bitcoin. Non-stop. Non-stop. If Bitcoin does a 4x during this bull run, your assets will have lost four times their amount of value compared to Bitcoin. Isn't that the craziest thing in the world to think of? You will, even if you sold it later on, you'll, you'll only be able to get less Bitcoin forever and ever and ever. This is why I think we see this rush right now. Imagine telling that to the average person. The average person, I don't care where you are in the world. Imagine telling someone everything you own is going to continuously lose value to Bitcoin. Basically forever. And, I, and I, I'll even give you until the year 2140. Everything you have, Bitcoin will only continue rising against the dollar, against the euro, against the yen. It will only become more expensive. In 10 years, whatever you try and buy will pale in comparison to what you're able to buy right now. The other day, I don't know if you saw it, there was a, there was a big thing going on during the halving where everyone was buying $21 worth of Bitcoin on the halving. It was great. Kumbaya loved it. That $21 is going to get you dust in the future. You are going to be able to buy probably three, 200 Satoshis, if not far less. Isn't that the craziest thing in the world to think about? People who are holding and buying Bitcoin compared to other assets, are only making money consistently. No matter what you sell into Bitcoin, 10 years ago, the, the stuff you have around you would have gotten you, you know, 50,000 Bitcoin became $3.3 .3 billion. The US dollar, property, everything is losing value compared to Bitcoin. I don't know if you've ever, he's, he's quite eccentric. He's quite eccentric, but some of what he says is true. Max Kaiser there was some something recently where he, he, he was at some sort of thing. And he was screaming, it's all going to zero. It's all going to zero. He looks a little, he looks a little crazy when you hear him saying all these things. But he's correct. All asset values are going to zero compared to Bitcoin. We see the charts right now. Bitcoin's been around for 15 years, dude. 15 years. What about the next 15 years? 
It's insane to think about. It's literally insane for my mind to think about that we have come this far, that we are where we are, and we are still early. Early, 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 early. This is why you keep seeing all these rich people trying to persuade people to not get into the market. Oh, no, Bitcoin's no. They, they, they know what numbers are. These bankers and these billionaires, they understand that even their money has lost value compared to Bitcoin. Why do you think they all love it now? Because they continue to get richer as Bitcoin goes up. It's not just in, you know, in, in U.S. dollar valuations. All their other assets are losing value compared to Bitcoin. You know we're in the future, right? Like that, <laughs> I could have never said that in like the late '90s. People were like, "Oh crap, he's crazy." Anyway, woo! So that was supposed to be the Tim Draper news, but that kind of transformed into something else entirely. Yeah, that's the uh, Bitcoin's going to a million. It's just a matter of when. It's literally just a matter of when it's going to happen. News. Uh huh. Okie dokie. Okay. Let's move on. Also in popular news, there's no confirmation of this. It is just mega ultra Power Rangers speculation right now. Uh, apparently, Michael Saylor is selling some stock. It says apparently entered into a stock sale agreement with the company last year to sell 400,000 shares in the first four months of this year. A lot of people think that the selling think they think assumption that the selling that he's doing is that he's going to be buying more Bitcoin. There's no uh, what's the word uh, confirmation on this zero percent. However, multiple different websites were speculating that some kind of a, a, a big purchase is going to be announced over the course of either this week or the next couple of weeks, which is typically how MicroStrategy has done it, the way that they normally do it is that they kind of put debt against the company in the form of shares, and then those shares usually end up getting sold and redeemed for Bitcoin in some sort of way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is quite different, but the news is um, apparently 400,000 shares, and people think he's going to start buying some Bitcoin or announce a Bitcoin buy what have you. Very, very popular news. Is this one the same? Nope. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, in news, I think, I think we're supposed to care about. Before the Bitcoin um, halving, stock investors speculated on the performance of various mining companies, leading to significant price increases for some, particularly Riot Platforms, Saw the most substantial growth among publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies on the day before the halving, with its stock price increasing by 10% to $9.13. This increase is Ryan in Ryan's in Riot's stock price coincided with the company's announcement of a new 250-acre mining facility in Texas. So remember how like three days before the halving, there was oh, a lot of news talking about like, well, people who are mining Bitcoin be able to continue their business. Bitcoin's reward is getting cut in half. What will the people who are mining Bitcoin do? And I was like the same exact crap they were doing before. They're going to continue mining Bitcoin. There's going to be no difference. And we started hearing, I started hearing and reading and showing sometimes in the news that people were like, oh no, if the, if the, if the halving happens, and then, you know, there's not enough Bitcoin to go around and this, then the, the mining companies won't be making as much money. And then the valuation of their companies will go down. And I was like, that, and I say this in the nicest way, that is of no concern to us. We don't run mining companies. I mean, maybe there's one person, hello, if you're watching this. But for the rest of us normal people, we don't run mining companies. And a mining company is not Bitcoin. And regardless of what, what might happen to one cryptocurrency company who's mining coins, the, the minings will still continue. Did I make that clear? So, um, for some reason in popular news, um, as the having happened, um, stocks for mining companies began to move up. And I was clicking around and I was like, Ooh, 
that's that's cool. So I don't know if we're supposed to also be celebrating with them. I don't know if this delusion uh, that people tend to have, that people who are mining Bitcoin aren't going to do well after a halving, it happens every single, every single halving. In the year like 2100, are we still going to have this nonsense going on? The, there, there's no real negative for people who are mining their coins except for like they need Bitcoin's price to go up so that they can basically sell less Bitcoin because they don't want to sell their Bitcoin. That's, that's, as, that's as crazy as it gets. So yeah, a lot of news floating around talking about um, stock prices going up for mining companies. These people are worth hundreds of millions of billions of dollars. Like I'm pretty sure that they'll be just fine. And the money that they're getting from all these new investments will only aid in them being able to create more Bitcoin for themselves and have other mining operations. So that's the, whoa, I'm so happy that the mining companies worth billions of dollars are doing well. I wasn't expecting that one. And yeah, let's move on. Also in... Golf clap, or should I say football clap? Um, the uh, sure. The so the Winklevoss twins have purchased a portion of a football club called Real Bedford Football Club, um, and they apparently are co-owning it with Peter McCormick, who I I, I believe is the I believe is the guy from the podcast, um. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, but this was like, you know how like you can kind of create drama that's not really there. So the news, the news is, um, we are supposed to care that the Winklevoss twins paid four point five million dollars. It says of Bitcoin in Bitcoin, fantastic, uh, into making themselves co-owners of this football club. Got it. Um, the news also then came out. That one of the Winklevoss twins uh, was on an interview somewhere, sure, and um, someone was like making fun of them for not knowing how to play football or something like that. And I was like, do you think these billionaires care? But the problem is, reeling it back, yeah, they reposted it and they were like, we are big fans of football and we like so and so. And I was like... If if I'm ever egregiously lucky enough uh, to become a billionaire, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, big dreams and all that. Um, I want you guys to keep me in check and make sure that I'm simply, like, buying islands and, like, really cool things and I'm not arguing with people on Twitter that I care about a football team that I own a portion of. Make sure that I'm buying yachts that are way too big for me and that I'm not fighting with people talking about, no, Cardano's amazing. You're all rich. I, I, I don't know. Don't rich people have other things to do besides fight with people on Twitter? So in the very beginning... This news came out. It was all over the place. They bought a portion of it of a football team. And then for like two days, they were just reposting like, no, we are great football fans. And I was like, I don't, I, I wish I cared. Like, I wish, I wish I had a portion of me that was like, yeah, they care about football. Leave them alone. No, they just, just, just don't argue with people. And I, and I say this also in a, in a very first world way. I mean, you're rich. Just stop worrying about everyone else. Just go do rich people stuff. Like, buy a street somewhere. Buy a store. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, also popular news. I feel like the Winklevoss twins are usually similar to, like, Coinbase. The stuff that they get into, like, is never dramatic, but they make it kind of dramatic. Remember when the SEC was going after, I mean, like, five months ago when the SEC was going after Coinbase and the Coinbase was telling all of us to go on social media and like hashtag SEC and at the SEC being like, leave Coinbase alone. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. What are you talking about? Like you guys are worth tons of money. I have, I have nothing to do with the, your current situation. So cool. Fantastic. Um, 
so yeah awkward i think that's gonna do it for this video um i do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed i know the video was a little weird but you know that's just what it is uh hope you all enjoyed hope you all are having a great day morning afternoon evening wherever you are wherever you might be i do hope it is absolutely fantastic Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.